Welcome back to our pregame breakdown. We are breaking down now the defense of the number three Oregon Ducks versus the Arizona Wildcats. I'm Ali Osborne here with Max Torres. Max, how are you doing? I'm great, Ali. Excited to, to continue the breakdown here and see uh, what the Ducks uh, are going to be facing against the Arizona offense here on Saturday. Now, give us a little synopsis of what you think uh, the Oregon defense needs to do to take on the Wildcats. Yeah, I, th I think it, uh, it starts with, you know, just continuing with, with what's been working well for them in, in the past. You know, the, they've been really stout against the, the run um, through these first couple of games in the season. So I think that's definitely been doing really going well for them. I think they really got to crank things up in the pass rush department. That's something that's been pretty lacking since Kayvon Thibodeau got hurt. Uh, I, th I really thought that was going to be, you know, the, the end of them against Ohio State. Um, you know, the rest of the defense did a tremendous job, but when you can't get pressure on the quarterback, it, uh, it really, you know, complicates things for the secondary. The guys feel like they have to cover people longer. Sometimes that can lead to penalties, what have you. And the uh, Arizona offensive line is, is big and experienced, so they're not going to be an easy bunch to, uh, you know, to go up against here. And I think it'll be a good little, little test for the, the Oregon front that is young and still developing. But um, I think they've got some great players there. Oh, absolutely. And one of the biggest question marks, especially for this upcoming game, is will Kayvon Thibodeau play? Mario Cristobal said he's still day to day. And in my opinion, I don't think the Ducks are going to risk a high voltage player like Kayvon Thibodeau just coming off of an injury on a team like Arizona. Um, Max, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I definitely agree. You know, uh, Mario Cristobal is saying on Wednesday that, that KT is still day to day but they feel encouraged about kind of what they've been seeing. So uh, against an opponent of this caliber, and you know, not really a slight against Arizona, but it doesn't totally make sense to, to roll KT out. So I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see him again, um, but it is good to hear that, that he's progressing. If you're looking at a guy that has been uh, kind of stepping in uh, into a bigger role in his absence at Braden Swinson, he's uh, listed or going to be listed as questionable, doubtful is what Cristobal was telling us on Wednesday. Um, so Maybe we'll be, like we've kind of talked about on the offense, it'll be an opportunity for some of the younger guys to step up. I'd love to see a bigger dose of, of DJ Johnson to, to get some pressure there. But uh, the defense is getting healthier, so that'll certainly certainly uh, give them a, a little nice nice little boost against Arizona. And Keith Brown, Mace Funa, will they play? They are healthy and ready. Are they going to be young guys that will get some reps, even though they've just come off of injuries? Yeah, yeah, they they are uh, they're good to go is what is what Cristobal was telling us today. Uh, Keith Brown was available last week uh, against Stony Brook, but Cristobal was telling us that he just felt like it was better for for them to uh, rest him while he he works back. Uh, I thought he did a really really good job against Ohio State. I mean, first college action and first start coming against the Buckeyes. I mean, it's it's hard to to get a you know a, a tougher you know litmus test or you know just getting kind of thrown into the fire. But I thought he did great. Mace Funum was one of those guys that was kind of banged up um, last week. So I think that we'll, we'll see him return to a, a more prominent role. And um, like I kind of, kind of like I was saying, I think that the defense is going to, is going to be back to uh, not full strength. You know, they still have some injuries, but um, since you're getting some of these guys back, hopefully that'll help them get, you know, some more pressure on the quarterback. And um, maybe we'll see some more of, you know, Jeff boss at will as we're uh, trying to see kind of who's going to, work in there in replacement of Justin Flo. He was a guy that I got to talk to today and it's, it's been fun to follow his journey. Oh, absolutely. And another one to watch out for is Verone McKinley, the third, which was the PAC 12s decent defensive player of the week. He had three tackles, two interceptions and an 80.1 overall grade. He's going to be one to watch out for. Let's hope he can get some interceptions coming up. And another thing to focus on shifting to the wildcats what is this depth chart? Are you, what three quarterback choices? Gunner Cruz, Will Plummer, and Jordan McLeod all listed as co-starters. What is going on with that? Yeah, certainly not the the situation you want to find yourself in if you're the offensive coordinator down there in Tucson. Um, you know, not. <laughs> given that that the quarterback's the most important position, you know, on, on the field there. Um, so it, it's it's a tough deal. Uh, I think that it, it helps. It helps Oregon, but it also kind of throws a curveball at them because you don't necessarily know who they're going to try out there. So even though you don't have some, you know, proven guy like a, a Keaton Slovis or a Dorian Thompson Robinson um, staying in the Pac-12 South that you have to prepare for, 
uh, it does keep kind of keep you on your toes because you have to prepare for different looks. I, I heard that Robbie Ashford was giving this defense some some good uh, reps with the scout team. You know, he's a, a really, really mobile and athletic guy. And I think that uh, McLeod definitely fits that billing for, for the Wildcats. Plummer started off uh, last week against NAU through a pair of picks. So certainly not what he was looking for. McLeod came in to uh, to relieve him and we had he went six to seven for 66 yards and a touchdown. So uh, there, there's some signs of life there. And uh, I think that the, the passing attack for the, for the Arizona Wildcats has has been uh, not not the best, but they, they do have some some good playmakers there. You know, most notably Stanley Berryhill. Uh, he's been great for them so far, and I'm sure he'll hope to stay hot against the Ducks. And let's look at numbers specifically uh, to point out that was McLeod's first game action. The season was against NAU. Um, So six for seven for 66 yards is pretty impressive, but let's just check out this 50.5 grade for the offense, which is the worst in the PAC 12 for the Arizona Wildcats. And I know last year there was a little bit of a coaching shuffle, which means they lost a couple of their offensive linemen, specifically Rob Congle, who is doing great as a center for the Sooners right now. And they've lost some weapons on their offense because it's a rebuilding period for them. So they've really got to bring up their offense if they're going to take on a Titan like Tim DeRuiter's Oregon defense, for sure. Tim DeRuiter's defense has gotten off to a pretty strong start here in Eugene, gotten a a turnover in in each of his games. I believe it's up to seven or eight. And he said in the spring that was going to be one of his priorities is is forcing turnovers with this defense. For McKinley, like you mentioned, Allie, he's been a huge part of that already up to three interceptions, I believe. The dude was all over the place against Ohio State, forcing fumbles, uh, you know, laying big hits to, to break up passes. So he's going to be a big focal point. Since we were talking about him, I, I had a, a, you know, a cool little uh, tweet earlier that I wanted, I thought would bring be cool to bring up. Marcel Yates was on the uh, Oregon Sports Network, Oregon's coaches show today. And Marcel Yates was talking about Verone McKinley as a player and kind of what he brings to the table, his work ethic. And he was talking about kind of how he was approaching his preparation after this Ohio State game. And this is what he had to say. I come in the office early Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Verone McKinley is in my office after the Ohio State game. He wants to watch film of the Ohio State game, and then he wants to start getting ready for Stony Brook. So this is a dude who embodies that 1-0 mentality, and he's really the general for them uh, out there in the in the secondary, I know he likes to, you know, hashtag all of his posts with the general, but he, he's definitely one of the biggest leaders, especially in KT's absence. You got him, Noah Sewell, uh, you know, and other guys stepping up along the, the defensive front. Brandon Dorless has really emerged. So I think that it, it's been awesome to, to see a lot of these guys in the, the Oregon defense uh, step into their own, like we saw in the offense with the young tight ends and some of the receivers, but yeah, a lot of a lot of great guys stepping up. DJ James is another another guy who looks like he hasn't missed a beat really since mm-hmm. he since he got back from from uh, you know his off field issue um, and his suspension, but he's back now and and he's just been a force for the defense. And we just mentioned him, but we haven't mentioned him for the first part of the of of our coverage. What the heck, Noah Sewell? What are we going to expect from him coming up? Because nobody can stop talking about the Sewells. Man. Yeah, sorry. It, uh, it was a little choppy there for a second, but I think I got you, Allie. Uh, Noah Sewell, man, that, that dude's just a force. I was kind of surprised at how late he was in the game uh, against Stony Brook, but I mean, he, he's just such a steady contributor. He's all over the field. He He's one of the best run defenders in, in the country, and he's he's definitely, uh, you know, elevating his draft stock with a really strong season so far. Um, the guy just does everything that's asked of him. I think, you know, when you're looking at him next to uh, Justin Flo, we only got to see that a little bit, but hopefully we're going to see him, you know, grow throughout the season with regard to his coverage skills, you know, for a guy that, that is just, you know, always around the ball, you know, a, a big hitter, you, you want to see someone that can cover as well. And I think that there's a ton of potential there for him to, to take that big step forward, seeing that he's such a talented athlete and can move around really well. And young guys, who do you think, Max, are we going to see on the Ducks defense getting some reps after that uh, first first half? Who do you think is going to be put in as a young guy since we are pretty sure this is going to be one for some younger reps? Sure. Yeah, uh, we were we were hearing from Jason Jones today along the defensive front. 
really, really big defensive lineman. The, the Ducks are hoping to, to get him some more reps so that they can, um, you know, take – take some off of uh, Pope on Levi's plate. You know, he's an experienced vet that has been great for the ducks in the interior of the defensive line. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that Jason Jones has done a good job of just trying to get more comfortable. Um, they, that's a guy who, who's really um, shed some weight and the, the staff has lauded him for, for his attention to, to nutrition and to learning the new scheme. Um, so he's a guy to, to watch on, on defense. I think um, maybe we'll see more of Jamal Hill. You know, he's not necessarily a young guy, but, I think with how Bennett Williams has emerged, we haven't seen as much of Jamal Hill as we might have been expecting. Uh, some young, some young corners, Avante Dickerson and and Darren Barkins have uh, have been making some buzz. Damon David, he's working back from uh, getting a little bit dinged up, but Cristobal said that if he's not ready to go in this game, maybe he'll be ready to go pretty soon. So certainly plenty of names to look at. Jabril McNeil, I think he's the biggest guy that I probably should have mentioned. Him and Jeff Bossa, you want to get them more reps uh, in case that they need to get turned to. Um, now that things are looking pretty thin at linebacker. And if we may, are we allowed to talk about special teams? Yes, we absolutely should. Oh, my God. Let's talk about the Australian sensation. Give it up for Tom Snee. Cristobal said that he is an absolute weapon on special teams. And, Max, can you expand on what Snee is bringing to these special teams? And Tom Snee is such a great character. I got to meet him in person for the first time today when we uh, got to talk to him during media availability. For those that don't know, like you just said, he came all the way from Melbourne, and he's a guy that's just been grinding. And Crystal Ball says he can't say enough good things about him. Showing steady progression. And you know, keep in mind here, this is a guy who hasn't been able to go home since 2019. Uh, with the pandemic hitting and, and just kind of the breaks and how the schedule lines up. But I have some numbers here to kind of put more into perspective here. Um, you know, I feel like I'm not as versed in the special teams game as I'd like to be, but these you know numbers can help us a little bit. So, uh, so far in the 2021 season, he has punted for 15, he has 15 punts for 645 yards. And that brings his average to 43 yards a kick. Um, and he, He's pinned the opponent inside the inside the 20 nine times. And, you know, to kind of compare that for some context, la- all of last year he did that 11 times. So he's about to match that total through three games. But he, he's just a, a guy who has taken so much pride in his craft. He told us today that when he's looking at kind of the metrics or what his approach is, he doesn't want to allow return yards. So whether that be his placement of the ball on these kicks, getting the get getting deep into the opponent's territory – or uh, you know maybe making that tackle himself when he has to. This guy has just has really just taken leaps and bounds in his development, and I think that he's a big reason that we're seeing uh, you know the special teams take a big step forward this year. Oh, absolutely! And the combination of Tom Snee and Camden Lewis hitting kind of a stride recently, being able and making those making those extra points that need to be made. I think that those two together is really a, the icing on the cake for a great Oregon team for sure. Camden Lewis, man, that that's another guy that's a, a whole bunch of fun to talk about. Uh, we got to hear from him today. That was kind of the the big surprise for media availability. Um, you know, when I woke up this morning, I wasn't expecting to talk to any specialists, but we got to talk to Camden and he's got a cool story because, you know, last year uh, the the team decided, the coaches rather, they decided to, to go in favor of Henry Cattleman, who did a great job. Um, after Camden Lewis had a pretty good, uh, you know, hold on that job. A lot of people will remember his kick against Washington state for that mm-hmm. walk-off win, uh, in 2019, which was just absolutely insane. But, uh, he talked a little bit about how important it is to, you know, just stay, stay, you know, confident in yourself and you got to kind of go throughout the process. And he was saying that he's pretty confident, you know, anything kind of 50 and in, but if he has the wind at his back, he'd say maybe up to 65. And it was funny because he said, I don't know if Cristobal would agree with that, but I'm going to put that out there. So you want your kicker to have some confidence, right? And he's oh, yeah. been great. I don't think I don't think he's missed at all this year um, so far. Um, I, I can pull the stats up here, but I think um, so far in the 2020 season, he has just been been nails. He's three for three, uh, and he's also we're getting a lot more touchbacks from Camden Lewis on those kickoffs, which I think uh, you know you can't overstate the importance of that. You know, just not having to worry about a return when you can just boom it out of the end zone. Heck yeah, heck yeah. And uh, is there any other final remarks we're going to do at this, the end of this pre-game preview? Absolutely. Uh, I think we uh, we might have talked a little bit about Stanley Berryhill. He's he's the biggest guy to know. 
uh, without mm-hmm. a doubt on this Arizona offense. He's really an all-purpose guy. He does some stuff, some work in the return game as well. So he's probably their, you know, one of their best overall players. And I think he's going to be someone that the uh, the secondary, you know, we got Rod Chance and Marcel Yates. They're going to want to key in on him to, to really try to minimize his impact. Ducks really going to need to get some pressure, like I said. But since we're kind of just on some wrap-up notes, you know, if you're new to the channel, we, we'd really appreciate, a, uh, you know, you subscribing to the channel, or just trying to get this thing growing, get more consistent with it. We got tons of awesome content coming out uh, coming out at ducksdigest.com. That's si.com slash college slash Oregon. So head on over there to check out the written work that we're doing. Uh, we have a lot of people on the team. It's not just me and Allie. We got some awesome writers out there. Nick Batty has been doing a lot of stuff with me, uh, you know, covering these uh, press conferences as well as John Rustic. Um, we got a whole bunch of UO students. Uh, Allie is a former UO student. So, uh, you know, that, that that's running running deep here at Ducks Digest. But I think that's basically all the remarks that I have for this one. Um, it looks like the Ducks should hopefully, uh, you know, handle this one pretty, pretty uh, easily. But that's, like I said, we got to play the game. So 7.30 kickoff on Saturday should be a fun one to watch. Allie, do you have any last remarks here? All I'm saying is at 7.30 p.m., you better have your TVs on or your butts in Autzen. Just saying. <laughs> And thank you so much for having me on, Max. It has been wonderful, and I'm so excited to join the Ducks Digest team. It is great. We I bleed green and yellow, and it'll be great to cover it as well. Thank you guys so much, and have a great rest of your night.